In this video, I'm covering the parathyroid hormone analog teriparatide. This is a continuation of the video series on osteoporosis. I've already done an overview on the different categories of osteoporosis medications. To briefly recap, they can be divided into two groups, the anti-resorptives and the anabolics. And the anti-resorptives work by inhibiting osteoclasts and bone resorption. And the anabolics work by stimulating osteoblasts and bone formation. I have covered anti-resorptives in other videos, so please check them out if you haven't seen them. In the anabolics category, there are the parathyroid hormone analogs and romosociumab. And so in this video, I'm going to be focusing on teriparatide, which is a parathyroid hormone analog. So parathyroid hormone or PTH is the hormone secreted by the parathyroid glands, which regulates calcium serum levels. And it has actions on the kidneys, the guts and the bones. In the bones, it can cause both resorption and formation. So when PTH is secreted continuously, it causes resorption. And when it's secreted intermittently, it causes bone formation. So teriparatide is a PTH analog and was the first anabolic anti-osteoporosis drug to be approved and this was in 2002. It needs to be given as a daily subcut injection to simulate intermittent secretion to induce the bone formation. And the daily injections might be troublesome for some patients, but it is something that can be administered either by the patient or a family member at home, for example. Currently, its use is restricted to a maximum of two years, and this is because toxicology studies showed that teriparatide was associated with osteosarcoma in rats, although this has not been observed in humans so far. In terms of bone mineral density gains, teriparatide seems to show more impressive BMD gains at the spine, for example, versus zoledronic acid and nosumab, but not so much at the hip. However, some recent meta-analysis studies have shown that observationally, teriparatide does significantly reduce fracture risk at the hip as well, um, which indicates that BMD gains may not exactly correlate with fracture risk, although perhaps more data is required to further confirm this. These meta-analysis studies have also shown that better results are obtained the longer the patient is on teriparatide, so at least six months of treatment is required to show significant results, although this is limited by the two-year restriction. In addition, they've also shown that teriparatide also improves bone strength, bone architecture, and cortical thickness. And recently, some other studies have also indicated that teriparatide may help with healing fractures and may even help with healing atypical fractures associated with antiresorptives. Teriparatide is recommended in the 2020 Endocrine Society guidelines as first-line therapy in patients at very high fracture risk, which includes patients with severe osteoporosis and or multiple vertebral fractures. However, daily teriparatide treatment is limited to 24 months and discontinuation results in a rapid decrease in bone mineral density similar to donosumab. The BMD drop is not as rapid as donosumab though and also somehow the fracture risk reduction still persists even after stopping teriparatide at least for a short period of time which is quite different from donosumab where stopping donosumab is associated with rebound vertebral fractures. So after two years of teriparatide it's recommended to switch the patient to a bisphosphonate Otherwise, the bone mineral density gains will rapidly drop back down again. Similar to denosumab, using a bisphosphonate before starting teriparatide blunts the effects of teriparatide. But in most cases, this can't be helped as bisphosphonates are standard first-line therapy for osteoporosis. An alternative to using bisphosphonate is denosumab, where it has been shown that switching from teriparatide to denosumab leads to continued BMD gains. 
uh, superior to that of switching from teriparatide to bisphosphonate, although further studies are required to determine whether this translates to a further reduced fracture risk. And for now, there isn't really a clear consensus on what the best course of action is after stopping teriparatide, although clearly uh, switching from uh, teriparatide to bisphosphonate would be cheaper than uh, switching from teriparatide to denosumab. So there have been several studies recently showing that the combination of teriparatide with denosumab increases BMD much more significantly than either alone. So it's possible that this combination might feature in the treatment of osteoporosis in the future. Currently, the international guidelines don't recommend any particular combination therapies for osteoporosis. Teriparatide is fairly well established, so it is licensed for all the different types of osteoporosis. That is postmenopausal osteoporosis in women, osteoporosis in men, and osteoporosis caused by glucocorticoids. There is a neuro-PTH analog called abaloparatide, but as it's more new, it's less established. So unlike teriparatide, it is currently only licensed for postmenopausal osteoporosis. For teriparatide side effects, teriparatide seems to be fairly well tolerated with mainly transient side effects such as nausea and dizziness and then calcium level disturbance which is related to the actions of PTH and then very rarely osteosarcoma which was observed in the toxicology studies using rats and is the reason behind teriparatide's two-year restriction. Unlike bisphosphonates and denosumab, teriparatide isn't associated with atypical fractures or osteonecrosis of the jaw and indeed may even be used to treat these conditions as it helps to promote bone healing. So to recap, teriparatide is a parathyroid hormone analogue which when given as a daily subcut injection stimulates osteoblasts giving it anabolic properties and increases bone density especially at the spine. It has also separately been shown to reduce fracture risk at the spine and hip. It has bone building properties such as improving the microarchitecture and cortical thickness and may even have bone healing properties. It is generally well tolerated, but because of osteosarcoma being observed in toxicology studies using rats, its use is restricted to two years. It is not associated with um, atypical fractures or osteonecrosis of the jaw and may even be used to treat these conditions. The bone mineral density gains are comparable to denosumab, where it may give higher gains at the spine, but at the hip, denosumab may perform better. But unlike denosumab, stopping teriparatide is not associated with rebound vertebral fractures. And indeed, fracture risk reduction is even maintained for a while after stopping teriparatide. Upon stopping teriparatide, it is recommended to switch to a bisphosphonate or denosumab to maintain the BMD gains. Switching to denosumab has been shown to further increase bone mineral density when teriparatide is used in combination with denosumab. BMD gains were greater than either used alone. And for now, in the Endocrine Society guidelines of 2020, the use of teriparatide is reserved for the treatment of women at very high risk of fractures, including those with multiple vertebral fractures. And that's it for this video on teriparatide. Hope you found it helpful. Please check out the other videos in the osteoporosis series if you haven't already. And just a reminder that this video is for education purposes only and should not be taken as medical advice. Thank you for watching.